Hello and welcome back to the Doctor's Garage. So today I'm doing another modification to my Land Rover Defender. It's been something I've wanted to do for quite a while and it involves the back door. Now, the problem with Defenders in general is the back door swings pretty wildly whenever you open or close it. You can't park on a hill because the door keeps shutting you in the back of the car. And to be honest, it's quite dangerous when you've got the rear wheel hanging off the back door because it swings so aggressively. That modification I'm doing today is going to be adding a gas strut to my rear door. It costs about 70, 80 pound, stuff in the description below this video. But overall, I think as a modification, if it can stop that back door from slamming, if it means it opens and then slowly gets to its maximum opening rather than yanking the hinges off, it's actually going to be quite a good modification and probably money well spent. So following my journey today and we fit in this for the first time so let's see how we get on. Today we're going to be looking at putting a rear door gas strut on to stop my rear door from swinging about and actually this is what we ended up replacing on my TD5 so that's what we're doing in the job today. This kit from Mud UK and they actually send this kind of instruction guide which is really helpful for how to fit it and it actually looks quite easy so first job you've got to do is take the door card off and then um, have that all exposed so you can see where the other end of the gas strut goes into. It's got a defender, as you know, they kind of swing and open on their own accord. You can easily get things trapped in that when you do shut the door and they kind of swing open and keep going without any kind of stopping. Putting a lot of strain on the hinges, but also just being dangerous in general and just quite uncontrolled. So I'm gonna start by taking the door card off. You've, to do that, you've got to take this little plate out here, take these little screws out here, and then just get a trim removal tool, pop it all off, and that should come off. And I've done that before because I've messed around with the rear wheel um, before with the fitting of that. This thing, this little handle comes off, those screws come off, that kind of frees up the top bit. And then, as I mentioned, this bit next. And then I think that whole thing just unclips and just comes straight off. Come off, the best thing is to use the trim removal tool. I usually didn't have these and used to use a screwdriver, but I damaged a lot of trim doing that. I'd really recommend a set of these. They're like five pound or something. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to get yourself some. Because you literally slide this down the panel and then just give it a little bit of a push. And you should, there you go, popping them out like that. Super easy to kind of just unclip them and you know you're not damaging anything getting these small little pins out either. Here's my door card taken off. As you can see, you've got a few of like the electrics for the central locking and um, you've also got the heater element as there for the, for the rear window. And this is what we're sorting out today. So then we're replacing this setup. You've got that metal plate which somehow goes on there, I believe. I've got to work that out. And then the gas strut replaces this arm and just makes it will look a lot better, but also perform a lot better um, overall. Great time when you're here to put a bit of soundproofing on. Whenever I take the door cards off, it's always a good chance. Always keep a pack of silent coat in the back of my car. This is the four mil silent coat. Again, I'll put the link in the description below if you don't know how, where to get this from. And um, I'm going to be using that today just on these little areas to make it a bit better. Number two, we've taken the door trim off. We're now moving the check strap fastener. So taking that off, which is that bit right there. And then we'll be putting that new bracket on that's provided in the kit, which is right here. It's fastened on, that little bracket you can see by those two bolts under there. So that's what we're taking off today. This all does look a bit tight to be fair, doesn't it? So I'm quite glad to be changing it actually, uh, getting something less corroded put on my car. As you can see, they're pretty, tight and rusty. Just taking that off, they were a lot harder than I thought to get out. I had to use my torque um, drill to get them out and that has come out now and hopefully the new ones will go in with no problem. The old bracket and this is the brand new one, the stainless one. As you can see, looks a bit better than the old one. But I'm going to be putting that back on now quite loosely and that's what the instructions say to do next. So first lesson learned in this job is there's a plate behind there which is threaded, not the actual kind of body of the Defender which I probably should have known, but I didn't anyway. So this has just fallen out from underneath the car, which is the old threaded plate. So now, if I was to do this again, I would have taken one out and then put the other one in and then taken the other out and put the other one in. So just doing one at a time. It doesn't really say that in the instructions, maybe you should have known better. So what I'm gonna have to do now is try and hold this back up inside under there and then try and get one of the threads in to start before we do the other. Probably just about to see, I've managed to push the threads back behind there, behind this plate. If I get my hand up, you probably just see it moving behind there. And that's what I've got to line up now to get this new bracket on. So I managed to do that now. Got both of the bolts through back in that plate and left it quite loose. So you can adjust it up and down so I can line things up when I'm doing that next part of the, uh, of the project. Next up, we have to slide the check strap, oops, sorry, slide the check strap out the end of the track 
and then you can take the check strap retaining bracket off the door. It says this is optional, but I'll probably be doing that because I don't need it anymore. So somehow I'm gonna get that out of this channel that's just here. And then I'm gonna be taking that off as well. And I'm probably gonna take that off now because I think that's holding this check strap in. So I'm gonna take all that off and uh, see what's next. Clad just comes straight off and then you've got, by the looks of it, this little plate with the threads on it. Just take that off. But now this comes all the way out. We don't need that anymore. We're gonna move on now to fit in the new part. This bit's a part you definitely don't want to get wrong. So basically you put the new gas strut onto this loose bracket there, just put that nut and it goes from underneath on that side. And on the other side, you've got your plate and it goes from the top. And basically what you're looking to do is look where that lines up on here and you're gonna drill some screws into your back door and then put some rivets in there to hold that on. So you've got to find out the perfect angle where the door isn't too closed or too open, where the rear wheel, where the rear tire isn't touching the bodywork. So if you look here, my rear tire touches the bodywork just there. So I don't want it to go that far across or the other thing is your aftermarket lights as well. So you've got to get to the perfect place, mark those holes out, drill it on and then rivet it. And uh, yeah, that should be where the positioning needs to go to start the job. So it's in the middle of the door. It's on these two pieces just here that you want to start um, thinking about putting those rivets in. Those holes in the back, you're going to want a five mil drill bit. That's for the rivet size. They need a good quality rivet gun. I'm wondering whether mine's going to be good enough, but we'll soon find out. I'm going to be mounting the plate. You can see the tiny little marks I've just made there and there. And that corresponds to it about there. And it's sitting about a centimetre off my back sort of bodywork to the rear wheel. So I'm hoping that'll be perfect at where it is. Okay, are my four holes screwed in, or drilled in, sorry, and then they line up perfectly with that. So that looks good. Now I'm gonna rivet that on, and let's see if this all works. Absolutely budget rivet gun I bought off Amazon for about 10 pound. Amtec, I'm not sure if that's a good brand of rivet gun, but it doesn't normally perform that well. So I'm really hoping today it does with these big fat rivets we're using on that plate. After you put the plate on, the instructions say you fit the gas strut to the door bracket and then the uh, the ball on the door bracket goes above the door bracket and then the other one goes from below. So that is below and the other one's above, that all makes sense. And just tighten everything up really. And then hopefully when you replace the door trim and the grab handle, it all should work. I've just put that on now and actually I've ended up using self-tapping screws, which are really rock solid, but it's because I never get on with rivets. They never seem to work for me. And that's probably because this is so rubbish. But anyway, use self-tappers. That's probably another option really and quite easy to do. Just a couple of pilot holes and got that fitted. And I've put this on. It's quite loose at the moment, but already it is starting to work. It's pretty spring-loaded at the moment, to be honest, but it is a lot smoother and it goes out and slowly stops. But let me tighten that up and then have a better look at how it all works. I've finished now, put the door card on, got it all tightened up and it's working really well. The only thing that happened is when I click that on there, you see, pops it off. And I've read that with this before, that that's what happens, is it always pops off the door card. You might need to trim the door card on the inside just to finish it off. So that's what I might do for that. But for the case of this video, I'm really happy with how it's gone. And it's made a huge difference. If you look when the door shuts, and if I let go of it even here, it springs open and slows down to fully open, which is a lot better than it was. It's pretty stiff now, so it's not gonna shut on me if you're on a hill or anything. And when you shut it, kind of normal, open it, pops open, and then slowly comes to a full open there. So yeah, really easy modification to do, and pretty good actually, made a big difference to the back end of my Defender. You can see with the door cut off where I think it's hitting is when it opens like that, it's just about there that this part in the middle is getting a little bit too far this way, ends up popping the door card off. So gonna see how to fix that, but I have read that's a really common concern with this. It doesn't really bother me too much, just means one of these clips can't be in, but overall, yeah, really pleased with um, with how that looks and just feels a lot more premium actually having this on my back door. See how I'm gonna fix that and just sort of keep the progress really on my whole Defender. Go follow me on Instagram right here and I'll be updating this and seeing how I get on with shaving that door card off. If you don't already, it's the doctor's garage. The handle is right here. That video has been good to see me fit the rear door gas strut. It's made a big difference already. I've got to trim that door card, get that sorted out. Any tips about doing that, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video.